Hello everybody, it's Kenneth from the Archives here with another video delving into our collections and looking at the history of the University of Dundee. You might have seen recently that we did a series of tweets celebrating the history of life sciences at Dundee, and that's a story that goes back a long way, and a short video could not do justice, so I'm not going to attempt to do the whole story of life sciences today. But one big part of the story of life sciences is the story of biochemistry. And here we see three very eminent biochemists have been associated with the university. In the centre, we have Peter Garland, who in 1970, 50 years ago, became the first professor of biochemistry at the University of Dundee. To his right, we see Sir Philip Cohen, a figure whose contribution to academia, to Dundee and to science generally needs no introduction. And to his left, Sir Pete Downs, who both as a biochemist and principal had made a fantastic contribution to the university. But this story wouldn't have happened without one man, the man who pushed for the creation of the chair of biochemistry, indeed pushed for the creation of the department of biochemistry. And that man is Professor Robert Percival Cook. Cook's appointment to Dundee is one of these moments where history changes. He was appointed in 1940 to what was then the Department of Physiology, to be a lecturer in biochemistry. Now, Cook's story is a fascinating one, and I think it's probably deserving of a video of its own, so we'll come back to the full story in another day. But Cook was Australian, he'd worked in Cambridge, he'd worked in London, he'd worked in Paris. It was 1940 he came to what was then University College Dundee to lecture in biochemistry. And he fairly quickly realised that biochemistry was something that could be built up at Dundee. And his time at Dundee was spent building biochemistry up. He very much got the approval of his head of department, initially Professor Robert Campbell Gary, and later Professor George Howard Bell. And he was successful in persuading the university authorities to rename the Department of Physiology to the Department of Physiology and Biochemistry. So that's the first time biochemistry actually got its name in. And it was a reflection of the fact it was recognised that it was becoming more important. Eventually, in 1966, Cook persuaded the university with the full support of Bell that biochemistry should be a department in its own right. So it did become a department in its own right in time for Queen's College Dundee, as it then was, becoming the University of Dundee in 1967. But if we want to know the state of biochemistry in Dundee for many years, well, we'll look where it's based. It's not based in the big shiny buildings you associate with today. It was based in this old building, which was actually a converted stable. So it had very humble beginnings. But Cook was making a success. And fairly quickly, after it got departmental status, Cook's lobbying was such that the university realised it needed a professor. Now, it says something about Cook that Cook himself did not want that job. Cook would have been the obvious choice. He'd been at the university for nearly 30 years. He had built the department single-handed. He was the head of department. He was a recognised authority. But what Cook felt biochemistry needed in Dundee, if it was to take off, was a new, fresh pair of eyes, a young professor with a good reputation. And he felt that had to be brought in from outside. And the university, in 1970, offered the post to Peter Garland. By this time, biochemistry, along with anatomy, had moved into this building. The Medical Sciences Institute work had started on that in 1967. Uh, it was never completed exactly as intended, although it would later be added to with other buildings, including the Wellcome Trust building, and as part of the impressive life sciences complex today. Although Garland got the professorship, he can work very much with Cook in the early days while Cook was still at the university, and it was felt Cook should get something, so in 1972 he got a personal chair. Sadly, ill health forced his retirement from active work in 1973, though he remained an emeritus member of staff. So, one appointment that really changed history. So I hope you've enjoyed that video. No doubt biochemistry at life sciences and certainly Cook are subjects we'll return to in future videos. In the meantime, stay safe and take care.